Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday where I discuss my favorite things in a subjective way. This is not an end-all, be-all list. This is my opinion. Today, we are talking about the Top 5, sorry, my Top 5 Horror Book Tropes. Let's get into it. Number 5. So at number 5, we are starting with mental illness. Anytime a book uh, suggests that a character may be delusional or have depression, anxiety, panic attacks, any of that stuff that contributes to the horror of the book, it, ha it, it doesn't have to be real for me, but it has to feel real. Um, I especially like surreal circumstances where people go off into their heads. Um, a, a really, really good, uh, let's see here, example of this would be Eleanor by Jason Gurley. Um, it's, it deals with depression, it deals with, uh, I, I think even a bit of postpartum from the mother's perspective. There's a lot of, uh, talk of mental illness in that one and how we cope and how we get through, but it has to do with a fictional, surreal world. Um, I remember the, the darkness, I, the darkness was, was palpable in this book. Um, there was another world that had dinosaurs and meteors. It was, it was crazy but I absolutely loved it and throughout the entire book you're wondering if it's if this is actually happening to this child because for the most part it's about the girl named Eleanor so yeah number five is mental illness number four at number four we have stupid people I love reading about stupid people and I've was going to add this to my uh, top five horror movie tropes, but I decided not to because I think I like reading about stupid people more than, you know, I like watching them. Um, an exception to that would be uh, like a Blue Ruin and The Green Room and uh, Murder Party. Uh, the director of those calls those uh, films his, his, I think, his, his stupid person trilogy because they make dumb decisions. Um, characters don't have to be smart. Um, not everybody is smart. And when they make when they make bad decisions based on their intelligence level, I like that even more. So yeah, number four is stupid people. Number three. Number three is a big one. We're get, we're getting to my favorites here, of course. And number three is small town horror. A good example of this would be uh, Todd Keesling's uh, Devil's Creek. Uh, damn near anything by Stephen King, especially early Stephen King. I love it when it, it can be cults, it can be monsters, it can be any number of things, but it has to be in a small town, secluded, cut off from the rest of the world. Now you can have, actually, you know what, I, I take that back. I was going to say you can have outside influences, but I much rather prefer the, uh, the you know, be, people being stuck in this area and not being able to go anywhere. Um, I'm a, I'm an especially fan. Um, I'm especially a fan of the uh, the loop. Uh, uh, let's see here, trope. I guess it is where you can't get out of the town. Kind of like uh, uh, in the Mouth of Madness. Uh, that that movie. Um, any any book that gets you stuck somewhere. Um, I talked about isolation and all that stuff, but it can be the entire town stuck. Um, and if they can't get out, that's just a bigger plus. So yeah, that's number three, small town horror. Number two. At number two, we have monsters. I love a good monster. One of my favorite monster writers is Hunter Shea. Um, he's fantastic with that stuff. He he doesn't get bogged down in it with too much of anything. He gets in, he gets dirty, and he gets out. His books are so much fun to read. If you have not read anything by him, or if you haven't read Creature, especially, is a really, really good one. Um, I don't want to tell you what it's about, but I'm if you're familiar with Hunter Shea at all, um, I'm pretty sure you can guess which monster he uses. They can be original monsters. They can be old school monsters. Uh, the only monsters I don't go for are your traditionals, like your vampires, your werewolves. I'm really not keen on zombies because it it feels like I don't know. It's it's all been done before. Um, if I'm gonna wa if I'm gonna do anything with zombies, this is gonna be watch a movie. But yeah, um, number two certainly is monsters. I love a good creature feature. The more monsters, the better. I especially like like a big group of monsters or people being turned into monsters, and those and then the uh, the protagonists having to deal with the fact that their loved ones, their friends, their community members, whatever, um, have become monsters. And once again, Devil's Creek. You 
you know, uh, that's uh, by Todd Keesling is a fantastic book that does that very, very well. But I'm a Stephen King fan also, so I just like monsters in general, and he he brings the goods. Even though he hasn't created a really good monster in a long time, um, his human monsters work perfectly. Number one. At number one, we have carnivals. Anything involving a carnival, a circus, an amusement park, any of those things. Uh, if there's monsters in there, big, big plus. If it's in a small town, big, big plus. If there's stupid people at the carnival, amazing plus. You know, just get everything on this list. If you throw that into a carnival setting, man, I am all about it. Uh, books that come to mind is uh, The Pilo Family Circus uh, by, uh, oh, I can never remember the dude's name. I'm so sorry. And also Geek Love, uh, Catherine, uh, I'm forgetting names today, I apologize. But anything set in, in that, and it doesn't even have to be horror. Like one of my favorite books of all time is Palisades Park. Um, I don't remember that guy's name either. I'm going completely blank here. Anyways, there's, I, I've always been fascinated with carnivals and circuses and, and amusement parks, theme parks, all that stuff. I love going to them. I love spending time there. Uh, I love the creepy feel of them. Even when you're having a good time, there's that underlying sense of disturbia. You know, there's that underlying sense that, you know, something could go wrong at any moment. And if something does, you're trapped with all these people, um, you know, at like rides ma malfunctioning, you know, any, any of those things, um, the, the, the usually creepy dude that runs the ride, you know, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Any, any time you put me in a situation where people are supposed to be having fun and that fun is turning against them, I, I, I have a lot of fun with that. So yeah, carnivals are my number one and I can't think of anything else that I would rather read more than a carnival story at any given time. So there you have it. That is this week's top Five Friday. Y'all like my shirt? It says, I don't give a fox. Anyways, but uh, uh, let me know some of your favorite horror novel tropes down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, let me know why you like them. Um, it just, uh, you don't have to do a top five. You can do one. You can do ten. You can do twenty. I, I don't care. You can't link me to your own videos because I've turned off links because it, it Anyways, it, it got ridiculous. Um, so yeah, put your stuff down there in the doobly-doo or tell me to go check out your channel and which video to go look at. Just don't link me. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.